In the last video, we installed a turbo and nitrous on our budget two-stroke 50cc drift cart, and it didn't end very well at all. Oh no! Oh my god, there's a hole in it. That is part of the block right there. Whilst it did work for a couple of pulls, we ended up putting a hole in our 50cc motor. And now we're at a crossroads to decide what we're going to do next with our budget drift car. Do we put another 50cc motor in it and keep going, or do we go bigger? Welcome to video number four in the 12 days of Mike Miss video series, where I'm doing daily vlogs every day up until Christmas, and I'm giving away prizes in every single video. And in this video, I'm giving away a $100 two-step garage voucher. All you need to do to enter is just chuck a comment below. Say whatever you are thinking. Let me know whether you think we are crazy for doing what we're doing in this video. I'll pick one lucky winner. Can be anyone from anywhere around the world, so good luck. Throw a comment below and enjoy the video. You. Well, this morning I went shopping. And to be fair, I'm not actually quite sure what I've bought. So let's do an unboxing and see exactly what I've purchased. Kickstarter, shifter, something wrapped in Chinese newspaper. <laughs> Look at that, holy crap, that's a beast of an engine. Engine. <laughs> So what we have here is a 125cc three-speed manual, wait, four-speed, <laughs> four-speed manual four-stroke motor. I'm being completely honest when I say this. I've got no idea about this motor, like of what we've just bought. I just know that I wanted a bigger motor and I wanted to go faster. So we're gonna be learning together <laughs> with this thing, but this was $450 for the complete package. So that's the motor. We've got the loom here, we've got a battery because this is electric start, which is super exciting. No more pulling that damn cord, which was always the bane of my existence when this motor wouldn't run. So essentially we have, I think, everything we need to make this work in our car. But the coolest thing about this motor is it's sequential shift. So we're gonna have a shifter on this thing. Our other the motor put out about one kilowatt of power. This motor puts out about 5.4 kilowatts naturally aspirated. So we have literally five times more power with this new motor. As you can see, there's a sizable difference between the two motors. But before we dive in too deep with that motor, we need to strip down the car. So right now we're gonna jump in, remove the nitrous, the turbo and the motor, just so we can start getting our measurements for this new motor and see exactly what we're gonna have to do to fit the new motor in the chassis. But this is gonna be an absolutely wild swap. Let's get to work stripping down our car. So our cart is fully stripped, well, the engine is out and we are ready to kind of start figuring out how we can put the new engine into our frame. Now I have the engine side by side right here and I can tell you right now, this is hilarious. I kind of thought that this would be just like a quite an easy swap, but now I realize maybe it's not gonna be so easy, but check this out. So here is our 50cc motor that we took out of the cart. I can lift it up with one hand. It's very small. <laughs> Look at the difference between these two motors. So so uh, yeah, the size difference is absolutely substantial. Weight difference would be like way over double. I cannot lift this thing with one hand at all. And fitting this in that frame is going to be very interesting to say the least. Not to mention the fact that we did just paint this frame, but hey, I'm actually really excited to get this thing working. I think it's gonna be an absolute animal. I'm not sure if I mentioned this before, but this is a two stroke motor and this is four stroke. Why did I pick four stroke? Well, this is kind of one of the only motors they had left on the shelf because it's coming up close to Christmas and I really wanted to do this engine swap so we didn't have a lot of choice but also the four stroke motors accept boost a lot better and you know eventually we're going to end up putting a turbo on this motor in some way shape or form and even though I love the two stroke noises and how they rev the four stroke is just a much better option like I said before this is a manual motor which means we're gonna have a clutch pedal so we've got a lot of figuring out to do in terms of how we're gonna mount pedals and stuff like that on this cart I'm also gonna switch to a hydraulic rear brake just to make it a little bit more safe when it comes to the braking. So giving you this kind of perspective with the motor versus the frame, I can already see straight away that we're going to have to get rid of this bar, this bar, and probably this part of this bar as well. I'm going to do some cutting to our frame, and then we're going to go ahead and kind of sit the motor in the frame and get a little bit better of an idea about exactly how this is all going to come together. There's no turning back now. Holy crap. Oh. <laughs> 
Oh my god. First of all, I think I spent a little bit too much money on this thing. But I know you guys wanted to see me go bigger and better, and so my stupid brain made me go the biggest that they had. But this is currently how it looks. And you can immediately tell that we're going to have to make some more modifications to the frame. This is sitting too high. This is where the carburetor goes, so the car will be sitting somewhere up here, which is a bit silly. So we need to go much lower with the motor. So I think that I'm gonna carry the frame on down here and like, and then maybe loop it up. But there's definitely a lot more that needs to be done before this is going to sit in its final resting place. But I mean, we're definitely going to be able to make it work, which is pretty cool. I'm gonna take the seat off now and kind of remove that stuff. And we're gonna basically have to revise that whole setup to make this fit and work. And here was me waking up this morning thinking that this is gonna be an easy swap. Absolutely not. So after a bit of cutting and revising and repositioning, I've got the engine sitting approximately where I'd like it within the chassis. I think I'll go a little bit further backwards with it, but for the most part, the height is fairly right. It might even sit slightly lower, as you can see. We're using blocks of wood at the moment just to position it all. As you can see, we've chopped a whole lot out of the frame, but that means we get to rebuild the frame and make it even better, which is really exciting. But this is where we're gonna have to end the video today, mostly because I have to go home and edit this for you to get this out for you today, but also because I don't have any 19 millimeter tube here. And I didn't want to compromise and reuse tube. I really want to make this look really nice, especially because I've spent so much money on the motor. We might as well build a frame around it and make it really strong. Safety is very important here. I think this motor is actually going to be quite fast. And so I really want to make sure the frame is up to the task. So tomorrow I'll grab some 19 millimeter tube. We're going to come back and we're going to mount the motor. I'm freaking excited about this. This engine is a complete unknown to me. So if you know anything about these motors, feel free to give me advice in the comments below. I'm open to any and all suggestions, but over the next couple of days we're gonna have this thing running and driving and I'm freaking stoked. That's it for today. Don't forget to leave a comment for your chance to win a $100 two-step garage voucher. Thank you guys so much for watching as always and I will see you in tomorrow's video for more crazy drift car action. You poos! I can't believe we've got a 125cc motor going in this thing. Crazy. Bye!